something spoiled. Welcome back. Tony. Scott. Danny. Hey, we're going to talk some more about Thor Ragnarok. And also, uh, we want to get together and talk about the MCU up to this point. Just kind of a collective retrospective of all 18 movies and a look forward to some of the movies that are coming in the pipeline here. Uh, so we've all seen Thor Ragnarok mm -hmm. and um, everyone's already heard what I had to say about it. I thought it was a pretty fun ride. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, and it uh, certainly one of the best the MCU has to offer. It had the best balance of just action and comedy and great acting. For me, I enjoyed it from beginning to end. I just... <laughs> yeah, I loved it. It's my favorite Marvel film so far because it's just an absolute sensory overload that somehow doesn't overwhelm you. That's just amazing right in there. It's bright, loud, obnoxious. The Mark Mothersbaugh, kind of his Devo-ish kind of score going through the entire thing, just kind of carried it. Um, getting a chance to see Chris Hemsworth actually doing comedy, seeing Taika Waititi actually put himself in a movie as a ridiculous character. And just everybody you can tell on film had a hell of a lot of fun doing what they're doing, and that kind of transfers over to the, the finished product. Absolutely. That is, is, you could definitely tell that yeah. the actors were really enjoying themselves. Anybody who had a scene with Jeff Goldblum, I'm sure, probably <laughs> pissed themselves laughing. Uh, the melty uh, stick. <laughs> oh, God, the melty stick. Oh, God. The other one, it was the, the, the devil's anus. Yeah, the devil's <laughs> anus. <laughs> so, uh, get help. Get help. Oh, I died because I did not see Get Help coming. You know, it's a really random, weird thing. You, know, you guys got the Matt Damon cameo, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the third time Matt Damon has shown up in a movie where he's not credited and just done something absolutely, absolutely bizarre or strange. I love that. That's awesome. He popped up in Interstellar, had this fantastic part. He popped up in this weird 90s rom-com. It's like a punk singer. I can't remember the name of that movie. And then this, he just popped up as like the actor playing Loki on stage with Chris Hemsworth's brother playing Thor, and it's just perfect. And Sam Neill. That's why he looks so much like Chris Hemsworth, because I was like, is that Chris Hemsworth? I think it's Liam Hemsworth. Okay, that Luke. makes sense then. Luke, 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 okay, okay. The, the lesser known brother. Oh. Not the Hunter Games one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just small things like that. There's so much thought put into every little tiny joke that you can come back and watch and catch things in the background, catch things here and there. It's just ridiculous. There, and it was, there was so, like, when I said it, there was so, and I, I think I said this to Tony, it didn't feel like they were trying to shove jokes in. It felt like someone with a really good sense of humor just wrote them. Yeah. And so you were just like, that's gold. Like, uh, there's only one that didn't work for me, and it didn't. It wasn't bad by any means. I didn't really think the Valkyrie being all like, oh, I'm badass and falling off the ramp. <laughs> I, I, I can deal with that. It wasn't the best one out of the way. I think it's probably yeah. the weakest one of the jokes. Mm -hmm. My favorite is still like when Hulk just watched by the towel drops and he's like, oh, I just cannot see. Anything. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's in my brain. <laughs> Thankful, thankfully, we did get to see some of the planet, the planet Hulk elements make mm -hmm. it into Thor Ragnarok. There was a good, a good amount of that too. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It just works. It works well. And I, I loved. I wanted to say I loved Hulk in this movie. One, I will say, it's really hard not to have a crush on Hulk in this movie because you. They made him look more like Mark Ruffalo. And his pants still never rip off of his body. <laughs> which, oh, I'm so glad no one has ever pointed out how ridiculous that is. I give Ragnarok a five. I give it a five too. Ragnarok was exactly what it should have been. It's borderline sensory overload, but in a way that actually worked completely. Mm -hmm. Suck ups. Oh, we didn't. We didn't talk about one of the most the valuable parts of the movie. Kate Blanchett. From the moment she hit the screen, she was perfectly evil. She was delicious. She like I. I she was kind of feeling like I love you. I don't hate you. You could kill everyone, and I'd still love you. Well, she did have some sympathetic moments, <laughs> which I thought. Uh, uh, only you, you have to be Kate Blanchett to pull that off. Right. Um, but uh, you know, for the most part, she was del she was you're right, delicious and unapologetically evil. Hey guys, let's do this. Why don't we actually go through since we got all eighteen in all front right. of us? Why don't we go through and just like actually uh, rank uh, each film? So let's start with Iron Man. I'll give it a D easily. D. Yeah, yeah. Iron Man. It's it's it's. I don't. Hate, I love Robert Downey Jr. I always had a you know. But I gotta give I gotta give Iron Man a B plus. It launched the MCU. I can see it, that. It it did its it, job to launch it. But I just I'm so it, burned out of Robert Downey Jr. Right? I'll give well, it a C. And, but this this was this was this was Robert Downey Jr. Up to this point, how we we had never seen Robert right. Downey Jr. like this before. He basically was he was the rudder that launched launched the MCU. <coughs> he gave us a hero. He mm -hmm. gave us they gave us humor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they kind of set up the the balance for what you know was going to end up being 
kind of the. Uh, I gotta kind of take that back. I liked it when I first seen it. I still really liked it then. I'm kind of burnt out of him now. So looking yeah. back in retrospect, uh, but it, I really liked it when I first seen it. The Incredible Hulk. Mm, yeah. Which yeah. Is, there's, there's, there's not been anything. See, it's just, I it's, liked it's, it. I only I watch it because of Ed Norton and. It, I don't, nothing, there's nothing memorable to me about it. It felt the most like a DC movie to me. I thought that as much of a jerk as Edward Norton is rumored to be working with him, and I, I've heard legendary stories about him, he did the movie justice. Yeah. Um, he was good in it. I think that he was, he, he, he brought uh, a, a nobility to Banner. I think that uh, Louis Lettier mm-hmm. was the director. Um, the the action was good, mm-hmm. you know the you know the fight between Hulk and Abomination, and um, I think that there were some nice moments with between uh, Hulk and uh, Liv Tyler. Tyler played Betty. I love Liv Tyler. I think I, she's gorgeous. I think Liv Tyler should not. She has no business being as attractive as she is, given how ugly her father is. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh my God! I like. I don't get that. I'm still shocked by that. That's Stephen Tyler's daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Iron Man Two. It was a step down from Iron Man One. It's still good. But it just the uh, lack of the, Terrence the, Howard. The, the, the Dana for me was just. Uh, Do we know why Terrence Howard left this the series? He, uh, money and politics. Mm-hmm. Once again, that's a whole other. Discussion. But then again, I still like because in in the um what's what's the uh, I what's the the War Machine? War Machine is dark skin in every every iteration. Yeah, Rose, so Rose, Rose looks definitely more like Don, uh, Cheadle. Don Cheadle yeah. than. Yeah. Terrence Howard, but I really like Don Cheadle in this. I actually thought that was a huge improvement. Don Cheadle also, I think, has the uh, he has the, co- the the comic chops and the wit to keep up with the Robert Downey Jr. Charisma, charisma yeah. is the right word. Yeah, he, is, he does have the charisma. Yeah, a lot more charisma than Terrence Howard. Um, so, uh, Thor, the Kenneth Branagh version. I I liked Thor. Mm-hmm. I thought that the um, I did think that the choice to have him become human was an interesting choice. Rana is a very skilled director. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, once again, I, even though Hemsworth was just finding the character, he does a good job of, you know, creating Thor, yeah. uh, determining who he is. And he has a good ensemble. He's surrounded by a good ensemble cast. Mostly. I, I don't like Cat Dennings. I, I really don't like Cat Dennings whatsoever. Uh, well, uh, well, but you know what? Cat Dennings was yeah. perfectly cast because she was supposed to be an annoying. She was supposed to be bratty and she worked really well in that sense. And it, it's a really good dynamic and it kind of bounces itself out with that. Stella and Skarsgård? Stella and Skarsgård. Stella and Skarsgård. It really bounces out between those two and Natalie Portman kind of bring a whole balance to it. After uh, Thor is Captain America First Avenger. I loved it. I yeah. loved it so much. The idea of actually putting a movie back in like a World War kind of setting completely just sells it for me because you actually get the chance to get more kind of absorbed into some world building and things like that. The CGI was definitely worth it too because when they made him like small, they made him small. When they made him big, they made him big. First Avenger, I think, was successful in every way that it should have been. Oh, yeah. It's not, definitely, it's not at the top of my list. It's not at the top of my favorites. Um, but, you know, I can't say anything bad about the movie. Chris Evans was, um, that was the first time I saw Chris Evans play anything that straight. That's the first time I liked him in a movie too, honestly. I, I have to agree. He always played like a, like the 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 old problem with him is that he always played like some type of party boy when he was in not another team movie when he was the uh, the uh, not the Flash the torch the torch he was like a oh my bro and when he was in Scott Moore's the world he was still like a bro and they never really gave him something that where he could have depth. Great intro movie for uh, Captain America. This goes back to what I was talking about before. It's not just a superhero movie. It's a war movie. So the ports are well the Marvel movies. I think yeah. the best of the Marvel movies are ones that don't. They're not just superhero movies. Marvel's The Avengers, that was where Joss Whedon got to uh, combine the characters into the first ensemble movie. Avengers basically was the movie that established, in my mind, that the MCU is here to stay. But Joss Whedon has never let me down. I saw um, Avengers in theaters three times. Mm -hmm. It was... it, It still is one of my favorite movies. It just has so much happening and so much going on, but so much... so much fun. Um, in that movie, and yeah, yeah, you can't hate Marvel. You can't hate the Avengers. It's just a really fun roller coaster ride. It doesn't take itself too serious. I kind of wish there was a better villain, but it works in a sense. Since the more of the movies about them kind of fighting each other and kind of mm-hmm. working to work together, a great way to end Phase One. Right. Iron Man Three was not the best way to start Phase Two. The Extremis graphic novel was so damn good. I don't understand why they went. They to completely start depart- well, they departed from the Extremis okay. uh, storyline. They just basically they use it in name only. Mm-hmm. What they did to, to Mandarin, I understand yeah. why they did it. To avoid the whole racial issues, yeah. Well, and they didn't, basically they didn't want to piss off China. 
Yeah. China, they buy a lot of tickets, and they didn't want to piss off China by making the Mandarin an evil Asian man. Mm -hmm. um, so they they went the, the choice the way that they went with uh, Ben Kingsley. But I will tell you the thing that I was exhausted by because one of my favorite relationships in the Marvel Universe is um, um, Tony Stark and Pepper Potts, and he was just like, "Come, just get married already, God." Following up Iron Man three is Thor: The Dark World. Just a total waste of time. It, it just it was definitely a letdown. It had, it had a few moments. It was also way down. too serious, and yeah. Natalie Portman was clearly pregnant. Clearly, and clearly did not want to be in the movie. Oh, but um, and it was so it was uncomfortable, especially the scene where like they had it like they couldn't mask it well enough. It's like okay, because she's skinny, she's not fat, she's pregnant, and it was just too. It just didn't. Well, it was too visible, and not, and not that I'm problem with women being pregnant. It, they should have waited. Yeah. Well, I mean, once again, it's the MCU. So I mean, one film has a schedule to keep because the studio wants it out. I guarantee you that uh, there's a whole lot of weight and pressure to make sure that these things are hitting deadlines. Awesome. So. Yeah. Even outside of the pregnancy thing, we got Christopher Eschelson, who's amazing. He's one of the best doctors. He's completely underrated as the ninth doctor. Yeah. And he's playing an elf, elf-ish, warlord, kind of boring-ass villain that doesn't get to do anything interesting in the entire movie. Right. Yeah, yeah just wasted. Thor the Dark World was... And it was uh, depressing. They were, they were just checking the box. I would say it's fair to say that the that Phase 2 did not actually begin until Captain America Winter Soldier. Right. And that's probably the strongest movie out of all Phase 2 series. Yeah, in Winter Soldier, the Russos, first of all, they raised their game. Uh -huh. you know, and once again, this is where you don't see these guys coming. Uh -huh. You know, uh, they're directing TV and, you know, episodic, com you know, comic television. And here they are doing things that we haven't seen done in the MCU before. Mm -hmm. Captain America comes out kicking ass. He looks amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the fight scenes, the choreography... Is really tight. Chris it was a little Evans. brutal for me though too. Like I like I I think out of all the movies I've seen, the fighting in Winter Soldier was the most realistic and less fun to watch. Well, that's well, the thing. The Winter Soldier again. That's what I was talking about before. Winter Soldier isn't just a superhero movie. It's a spy movie. Yeah, it's this really good kind of covert spy movie yeah, that just happens man, to have superheroes. It's a very yeah. Manchurian candidate. Yeah. And that's what makes Marvel great is when they actually step outside of just superheroes. When it's a superhero in this other story, they do fantastic. It's a really good example of that. Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy has so much to offer when it comes to things to love. Mm -hmm. And then, um, being that it was done so well, I just... It, it was it was funny. It was actiony. It was new. It was something that came... Like, we've been doing the Spider-Man, Thor... Iron Man, all of these things that we're so used to um, over and over and over. This was the first, ooh, who are these people? Like, if you weren't really a Marvel Universe fan, you wouldn't know them. And so they really, they were something that, that people had to be introduced to. Right. And yeah, that's where I fell in love. I love it. Uh, James Gunn is fantastic. If you have a good chance to check out Swither, it is the weirdest, goofiest horror movie I've ever seen. Um, so just seeing him get a chance to do this kind of thing, he did basically his Star Wars, in a sense, with Guardians of the Galaxy. It's just this fantastic, light, fun space opera. Age of Ultron, Avengers, Joss Whedon's second outing. Still really good, still one of the better ones. Yep, a definitely. step down from Avengers, but... It's definitely fine. a step down. I, I definitely enjoyed it more because, one, seeing the vision... My heart, but two, something that is so specifically. So I don't know if you guys have read the Runaway series um, in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Okay, so something so close to my heart was the literal romance between um, Scarlet Witch and um, the Vision. The, that they touched upon that romance, they just chose to throw it in there. I was like, oh. <laughs> well, I, think, I think that's going to be a scene that's going to kind of come back later on. James Spader. James Spader lived for that. Perfect to be creepy. Perfect to be creepy. He's perfect as Ultron in this. I just wish. I don't know. It's kind of surprising to see James Spader not try and sleep with somebody in the movie. Ant Man. Oh, Ant Man. Yes. One, I'm a big Paul Rudd fan. Two, I think he's a vampire because he doesn't age. But uh, I have been. I Paul Rudd is one of my oldest loves of all time. Mm -hmm. um, and Ant Man, I was going to see it anyway because it had Paul Rudd. It actually blew me away because I don't really know much about Ant Man, and he seems like a hero that's like. Ant Man, you know. Uh, I really would have loved to see what Edgar Wright could have done with this movie. You can still kind of see his I, fingerprints and his kind of humor going through it. Uh, yeah. It was still good. It, again, like I was saying before, where Marvel movies work best when they're not just superhero movies, this was kind of like a heist movie in spot. Civil War, Captain America Civil War, 
is going to be in like one. Of, it's going to be in contention for me for one of the uh, one of the top spots. See, uh, it, it, it introducing Spider Man was. I, I I don't know. See, I was so distracted by Spider Man. I don't know really how I feel about Civil War. I also liked Civil War because it introduced Black Panther. Yeah, I see Black Panther. Oh yeah, I can't wait to see uh, that. Well, Chadwick, cool Chadwick Boseman is an you know he's not the first Academy Award caliber actor who's been in the MCU, um, but he is he's definitely an actor first. I can't wait till next year when we get a chance to talk about Black Panther. Ryan Coogler is a director to be reckoned with. He is a awesome young director. Um, what else has he done? Fruitvale Station was the first thing that I saw him oh, do. Oh, that's on my list. Uh, he also directed Creed. He made Rocky cool again. Yeah, honestly, uh, I liked Civil War. It's not one of my favorites. Um, I really wanted to have heavy stapes, and they pulled back. Doctor Strange. Yes, okay, been waiting for this forever. One, wizards, yeah, and also the, the, the little joke that all oh, Earth has wizards now. Um, but, uh, do, um, one, Doctor Strange, I already, I've had the hosh for the character from Star because he's a surgeon and he's a wizard and, and he goes to Tibet. But um, the only thing I disagree with, and I, a lot of fans did, Tilda Swinton as the... But they actually, they got around that. Instead they, of actually making her a uh, character of Asian descent, she's of Irish descent. The they, they, they did, and I, I, I couldn't be mad at them for... I, I love mean, Tilda Swinton, but I just... Yeah, but there, you know, once again, you know the. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's, at it's, least it's, they didn't pretend that she was Asian. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm right. That would have been way worse. You know, Benedict Cumberbatch did the. He played the love child of uh, Doctor House and Tony Stark. Yeah, yeah. Um, See, he's perfect for this. He was just cocky and arrogant enough to pull up the Doctor Strange kind of thing. How Stephen Strange actually is. In the and I was actually surprised he took the role because he's to me he seems like such a serious actor, yeah. and. Well, he is. He's very good, but you know yeah. what? Uh, they, is... Disney throws money at people. <clears throat> Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. I loved it. J yeah. Just as good as the first one. Um, it maybe it may be a little. It, I, it, for me, uh, when you have Zoe Saldana, who I love on camera because I love her, just her feistiness and everything. She gives her all to her characters. Plus, Chris Pratt, who can be himself, but somehow that's how you imagine Star Lord acting is being a kind of weird, goofy guy. Yeah, that's good casting. Um, it, with them on screen, it's really hard to not enjoy the movie. And then, like the jokes. Um, and when Mantis is, you know, <laughs> you have you have feelings. Yes, 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 sexual feelings. No, 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 for her. And then like he's like, ah, you just told your deepest darkest secret. Spider-Man: Homecoming. Spider-Man. Oh, so you already heard what I had to say about it. Spider-Man: Homecoming was so much fun. Oh my God! I this Spider-Man is Spider-Man waiting for. Michael Keaton. Uh, so I, I love I, I love Spider-Man. The only problem I have is that Michael Keaton seems like an accidental villain the whole time. He's formidable. But it just seems like he's not committed to being a villain. He's just trying to survive, and I kind of feel bad for him the whole time. But anywho, back to like Spider-Man. I loved him every moment he was on the screen. His the anxiety he had, the his the way he delivered uh, his lines, his his personality. The the one he's in love with this Amazon goddess, uh, and he's just and he acts the way you think he should act. He's just like <gasps> you know, he's sweating when. <gasps> Spider-Man. Peter Parker got to be a kid. Yes. It was the, it was, this was the, it was the first movie that gave us that. I'm not going to offer some offense with Spider-Man Homecoming for me, guys. Actually, I liked it. I loved him as Peter Parker. My only major complaint with Spider-Man Homecoming is the suit itself. Uh, I didn't like the idea that Tony Stark made his upgraded suit, and I really felt that it was hard to tell when it was an actor inside a suit and when it was a CG Spider-Man flopping around. Next one. So. Then after that, of course, that brings us right back to Thor Ragnarok. Which I always said was fantastic. And My favorite. We, yeah, we, uh, we talked at length about Thor Ragnarok. Because Thor Ragnarok, quite frankly, is the first movie that's come out in the MCU since we've been doing this. So uh, this is a, this was our first shot at it. This, this is kind of cool, though. It feels like we kind of got a chance to readdress all these movies that mm -hmm. predated uh, something spoiled. But uh, So Thor Ragnarok is the latest in Phase 3. I'm not sure if the movies in the pipeline are considered Phase 4 or um, if they are still considered Phase 3. Usually the phases end with the Avengers movies, so if that's the case then there's at least two more movies in Phase 3. Black Panther, which we talked about, um, is coming out in early 2018. Mm -hmm. We're definitely looking forward to that. Ryan Coogler is def definitely a director to watch. 
<laughs> Chadwick Boseman, we talked about, uh, he is fantastic in mm -hmm. everything that he does. Yeah, he's the highlight of Civil War for me, obviously. Um, <laughs> the Black Panther should definitely be another worthy addition to the MCU, and not just because it's an MCU film, but like I said, as far as I'm concerned, Coogler knows what he's doing behind the camera. It looks like it's embracing the sci-fi, too, so that should be really interesting. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, it's Wakanda. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the big enchilada. Avengers Infinity War Part 1, once again, the Russo brothers return. Um, they have definitely demonstrated that they can direct action. They know how to manage the ensemble. After that, we get our follow-up with uh, Ant-Man. It's Ant-Man and the Wasp. And uh, so Paul Rudd, Danny's crush, will return. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and um, can't wait to see uh, the second installment. It's obviously Ant-Man survives Infinity War. Um, he he can shrink down to the right. So good. Well, that, we just, it's, 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 that's a group. It's, it's, hard, it's hard for him to be in the movie if he's dead. So. It's hard to get hit if you can just shrink down to a micron. So and Peyton Reed is actually going to be returning to Ant Man to direct that. So that's probably a good choice. Mm -hmm. And then um, Captain Marvel. That's what I'm looking forward to the most right now. Captain mm -hmm. Marvel. Uh, that should be pretty interesting. Brie Larson. An actual Academy Award winner mm -hmm. is going to be playing a Marvel hero. Basically, Marvel's going to be Superman in female form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is a fantastic character. Well, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to pretty much everything the MCU has to offer. That's it. That's our take on the MCU, our opinions about the various films. And, uh, guys, I, I enjoyed this. Um, so, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we will catch you next time. Bye. Freeze frame. Credits roll. <laughs>